Good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Voice in the Baltic Star. Um, I hope you're appreciating my sexy voice. It's kind of like a sexy duck and that's what I'm rolling with. So uh, thank you so much for putting up with that and uh, the three beautiful faces you see down the right hand side. This is the Boys in the Baltic Star and it's Friday night. And on Friday night when we feel alright and the moon is bright and all three of us are here, we play Traveller and that's what we're doing this evening. It's our first love. It's what we all got together to play at the beginning, and it's what we love playing now. It still brings joy to my heart, and I know to my colleagues' heart too, uh, when it's a traveller night. And we're very glad that you could join us this evening as well, and we hope that our love for the game and the system and our adventure rubs off just a little bit on you. Don't feel the pressure, you see. If you want to hang around just for a couple of minutes and then realise you made a terrible mistake, that's fine, that's fine. There's loads of much better stuff that you can go and watch and do. But if you want to give it a go, hang around. Tonight is two hours max, um, Ewan's got work, I'm still a bit poorly, and um, you know, if, if we let Ben keep going, he'd go for about 14 hours, so we've got to, we've got to reel him in a little bit with all his, his darts, he'd, he'd do a 10 hour monologue from Fess, that's what we have to keep on shortly. That's what we need, a Fess stream. <laughs> a Fess, you could. Oh, we could. A Fess all in a Fess hot tub. all the time, this is in the a Fess hot, In a hot man. tub, Fess in a hot tub stream. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. All the uh, all the things I read about our channel are Ben likes to harp on. Thank goodness for you and Luke reining him in, keeping it on track. Yeah, you know, not not going off on a tangent. <laughs> if it wasn't for those two, we wouldn't roll any dice. <laughs> exactly. Thank goodness. And dear viewer, you'll know that, you'll goodness. notice that this evening, we will see if that's exactly what happens. Um, if it's your first time, please feel free to lurk. We love our lurkers. Um, you can just hang out there and not interact whatsoever, and that's absolutely cool. We love that. Thank you. If you want to chat, feel free to chat. We'll chat with you if we're not like deep in the role playing juju or something. Um, you'll notice that we there'll be a chat on the side. Some things you might say might come into stream. Something you might say we might just like stop what we're doing and discuss it. Chat. Chat when people come in. We know that's an individual style. We know that's not to everyone's taste, but that's what we do. You know, we're welcoming. We want people to enjoy being here and feel part of it we like to shout out our friends and like our returnees you know it's important to us that we're all, it's like we're all sitting around together around a big table it's just um we're playing and we've tied you and gagged you to the chair so you can't go anywhere or, or ruin the game for us every now and again someone goes Arr! and then we have to do something um like feed you right there's a little red sun there you can click that and you can spend some points on stuff the expensive things will affect the game uh, you can give us a boon, that'd be nice, thank you very much. You can get one of our characters to tell a little story, or you can join canon itself and uh, put in a character name that that will become part of the adventure forevermore, and it will join the encyclopedia. Very important. Uh, the lower points are a bit ridiculous. There's things like Team Yana. Now I've got to do that. Where's Yana gone? There she is. Um, and there's anything that's like pinkish, play some music, and or noise and there's other things that are interact like clonk makes us hit something stefan's sneaky mask class means that stefan has to steal something which would be difficult right now because he's uh, in his room he's in his room or somewhere mm -hmm. very difficult to steal things from your own place i'm sure he'd give it a go though if anyone could um stefan could <laughs> he is just that sneaky he is so mm. sneaky um and then there's a one credit i'll drink to that if there's something we do or say that you appreciate then i'll drink to that for one single credit it'll always be one single credit and then we can raise a glass and we can chuckle heartily to ourselves like the end of a 1980s cartoon. And everything goes well. Um, so let's introduce the players and then we'll hand over to get started properly. My name is Luke. Hello, I'm in the bottom right hand corner um, where I like to be. Not on the political uh, compass, mind you. That's not where I want to be. But, uh, but for this stream, we'll do. Um, I play two characters this evening. I play Kara and I play Soraya. Kara. Is currently on a big, fast um, water ship speed eraser thing, she, which is awkward for her because she's more of a, a vlogging, arty, drinking, carousing type. So goodness knows what she's doing there. Talked herself up the wrong corner probably. And I'm also Soraya, who is like a female hand Solo that's gone a little bit wrong. Uh, but she's living her best life, so she's perfectly happy right now. And it's part of the reason why she's perfectly happy is because she's uh, hanging out now with one of the uh, characters run by this man above me. 
right here. Look, there is that. He is the Floof Master General. He is my brother from another mother. He is the housewife's favourite. And uh, as we're heading into autumn, I guess that's where my introductions end with him now, unfortunately. <laughs> but he is a wonderful man. He's uh, Let's all salute him for his glory. He is Ewan. Good evening, Ewan. How are you? Hello, Luke. I'm very good, thanks. I'm excited. I'm almost as happy, almost as happy as uh, Agnar Arnson, the character that I play, who oh, now gets to hang out with Samaria. Oh, they're so happy together right now. Indeed, indeed. Uh, currently currently on a dirigible, Nathan above the planet. Oh, who couldn't be uh, happy in a dirigible? Exactly, exactly. Surrounded by luxury cheesy balls. Uh, I also play Stefan Miller, who's uh, hauled up on the Baltic Star, hiding. Things may have happened. Somebody may have allegedly been stabbed by somebody else. <laughs> we try not to talk about it. Allegedly. Um, but he's safe, <laughs> basically, uh, and hiding away, waiting for the uh, waiting for the return of the rest of the crew. So we can hightail it out. Savages. Oh, he is. Oh, I'm glad we're making use of the toasted sandwich maker. It's never going to be the same yeah, yeah. again now. It's always grab those slight crumbs around. Not, not the, you always clean the bit itself, but just around that edge where the seam goes. Yeah, yeah. the crease. The yeah. crease is get, yeah. A, cr a crummy crease. You think, you think in whatever year we're currently set in, I lose track, but you think that they would have solved that issue by now. But yeah, they haven't. It's the struggle worse. is still real. Yeah. I think Crummy Crease is going to be the title for this episode. I've decided already. I've written it down. <laughs> um, it's on the paper. Speaking of a man that's never has a Crummy Crease, he is the smartest man. In, wait, wait, I don't know. He is the smartest man in any room who lives his entire life in the Twin Peaks dream sequence. He's surrounded by a legion of heavily oiled and musculature, musculature uh, naked men. He is the magnificent Ben. Good evening, Ben. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm well. And enjoying the gravelly voice. Oh, it's, yeah. it's, it's like you're a heroine from the film noir era. It's fantastic. It's going to be good for Antonio tomorrow. I'm going very Antonio heavy tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. good point. Yeah. Yes, no, I'm, uh, yes, very much looking forward to this. Always fun to play some Traveller. And uh, and we are, we are fast accelerating to a climax, I think. Oh. Well, that's what I like to hear in life. Um, especially when you lead us by the hand so beautifully. <laughs> despite despite us kicking and screaming. We're like two toddlers set free in a shopping <laughs> centre and you know what's best for us, Daddy. To, to, to be fair, you, you do actually generally end up where I thought you'd end up. It's just that the route you take to get there is often <laughs> very different from the one I thought. <laughs> uh, that's what we like to do. We're, we're all in it together, just we're in it for chaos mm. so please tell us um what are we going to try and ruin this evening okay well our heroes have a few problems to deal with on the ocean world of Geeka. after attempting to rescue rose from the evil anton fess which turned out to be a trap and was entirely unsuccessful Soraya ordered their new mercenary friend, Jural Cags, to fly the injured Zoe, wounded in the abortive rescue, to the luxurious dirigible Spirinza, where Agnar and Olivia Sharp are watching the Pelago Ocean race. Agnar healed Zoe, at least mostly, after a round of cocktails, because he's got his priorities straight, and they began to turn their attention to the plan to get to the embargoed island of Herrenhal. Now, Soraya called a friendly journalist, Varima Safran, asking for help to escape Herrenhal afterwards in exchange for pictures of the secret island and the inside story of Fess and the kidnapping of Rose. Now, down on the ocean, Kara, Kat, Sammy and Freya are part of the ISB team's racecraft. Uh, Travelling at close to the speed of sound, they are fighting for a good finish in the race. The race is permitted to go very close to Herrenhal, and the team is planning to drop off the speeding craft at the right moment to get to the island before the authorities can intervene. ISB is currently lying fourth of the eight teams, though this isn't the most important part of the race for Kara. On the Sparinza, our heroes 
decided to let Cags in on the plan, he being the only one still in the dark. He tells them he's heard of Heron Howe, but only rumours. He spent a lot of time loitering around bars on the space station and cheaper areas of the city of Selville, hoping to find someone who might hire him and his moral flexibility. When Soraya asks Cags what he's heard about Harrenhal, he looks a little ashamed or a little awkward, as if he's worried he's stepping into a sensitive area. But after he's reassured that he can tell them what he knows, he points to Zoe and says, I'm pretty sure she knows more about it than I do. And that is where we resume the story. Um, so I will look uh, Agnar in the eyes with, with a half a eyebrow raised and then uh, we'll try and time it perfectly with him to both look at Zoe at the same time if they can but, but perhaps not quite right which, which half an <laughs> eyebrow have you got raised? oh right. uh, she goes she goes left eyebrow no, yeah on. but which half of the, the outside of it. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, can you both roll a carouse check for me, please? <laughs> um, uh, with, yeah. with your social skill. Uh, Luke and I. Or Agnar, uh, yeah. and Ag <laughs> <laughs> Agnar and Soraya. At okay, least it's not okay, dexterity. Okay. Because Luke and Ewan have outstanding carouse skills. Oh, <laughs> oh, thanks, ben. We try, thank you. Carouse plus what? Uh, social. Oh. Um, can I make use of the fact that her social's rubbish? No. Um. <laughs> no, not this time. Oh, no. Uh, alas, I got a seven on the dice. Plus two for social, but minus three. I think she's tried to raise an eyebrow, raise an eyebrow and accidentally blinked. It's a, it's a four. <laughs> the, the, the two of you try to synchronise your glare at Zoe, and um, or at least questioning look at Zoe, and it's farcical how badly that goes <laughs> um you you end up sort of staring at each other and and then you know um soraya sort of turning her head in slow motion to try and fix zoe with her gaze <laughs> manages to, to to let her elbow drop off her knee <laughs> and makes a little weird jerk and and agnar turns around and, and zoe isn't exactly where he thought she would be so he ends up staring kind of into the distance and then having to focus on her again uh, it's yeah. um it's not as smooth as you were hoping. Um, Zoe? Um, she's not actually looking at you. She's looking at Cax. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet she is. And, uh, and he's starting to look a bit nervous because she's just staring at him in silence. Um, and he, he tries to sort of hold the gaze for a moment and then his eyes drop and he says, forget I said anything. Sorry, I didn't mean to uh, step on any toes. Uh, Zoe, he may be an idiot, but if there's anything we need to know, before we go to uh, an illegal island and potentially face a man that we all hate to rescue a crewmate, it would be good to know. She, um, looks at you quite, with quite a level, you know, gaze. Um, can you please Roll a persuade for me. Oh, yeah. Your choice of intellect or social. Okay. Yes. Um, ben, as this is going on, can Agnar just keep an eye on Cags and just gauge his reaction to this? And... Agnar hasn't known him very long, but he does know the sport. <laughs> and it feels like a very uh, well noticed thing. Can you roll a streetwise with intellect then for me? Oh, See what you can spot. Good work. Okay. Yeah, of course. He's very uh, street. For... He's very streetwise. Uh, <laughs> that's an eleven. Nine plus two. Okay. Mine is not an eleven. Mine is a seven. 
Uh, minus three. Oh. Okay. Um, you, you can tell that Cags is sitting there. Um, You're so streetwise. No. Soraya. Um, Zoe nods after a while and she says, I, I don't know anything. I don't know anything that would help Rose. Obviously, I'd have told you that. I don't know anything, really. But I kind of know a, a fairy tale. I never... I mean, I never believed it. But I... I've heard it most of my life. So this goes back to the stories Zodanis tell their children about how the Zodani consulate came into being and why it is the way it is. And they tell this, this story that there are places in the galaxy where things were left that were gifts from the gods or the ancients or something and they were instructions instructions on how to hone powers of the mind and while nobody ever really knew where they came from or what they meant um, there seemed to be a lot of them in Zodani space and they seemed to be rare anywhere else so it was seen that we were sort of gifted with this um, this mission to strengthen our minds as the way to to run a galaxy. And I've been to a few such places, but the ones I've been to before, they're like, well, they're now like libraries and research institutes and archaeological digs and they they don't normally let everyday people take a look at the real deal they just build a building around it if you know what i mean mm -hmm. um but i was wondering given the the cult we were dealing with on the ship on the seamstress maybe their fabled island is one of these maybe that's where they wanted to go there that's that was their their mission because they seemed to value highly the control of the mind Is this the only one you're aware of in Imperial, the Imperium? I don't even know if this is one yet. I wondered for a while if the the other island we visited here was one of them. But I don't really know what they look like when they don't have an archive or a library or a research institution built around them. It's it's just a fairy tale, you know? The, um, it would explain why Fess is so keen on hunting and maybe he also has been looking for a way to get there and has seen this race as his chance. If, if it's something that gives you more power and uh, it's a gift 
and to sort of to hone that mind, then of course he's going to go for it. It strikes him as the, you know, it strikes me as that's exactly what he wants to do. I mean, it's it's one of those things that people tell their children at bedtime. You know, it's I, I wouldn't put too much faith in it. And I don't think Fess would either. If he's, if he thinks it's one of these places and he thinks it's valuable, I don't think he believes it's going to make him more powerful. Mm -hmm. I suspect he's not going to use the island as a resource but as a fairy tale i think he's going to spin lies from it for someone else mm. tell them that this is how the zodani got their power <coughs> and this is how someone else can get their power and i have no idea who he'd be selling that story to but again it's a bedtime story so somebody must be pretty desperate if they believe it or i suppose very young do you, sorry, thinking back, do you think that maybe those carvings that we saw on that DKB1 Alpha, that godforsaken planet, the ones that sent everyone the juju feels, <laughs> she's on nudges, Zagna. Um, is that, was that a Zodani carving? Do you think that was a, from the ancients, the instructions from the ancients? She thinks for a moment. Oh, that's not bad. Good intellect role for her. Um, <laughs> She's a smart lady. She um, she thinks for a moment and then she says, <laughs> I don't think it's the same thing because of the horrors it put in people's minds mm. but it could have been left by the same people the the fairy tales the, the bedtime stories they they talk about these things like they are home like if you walk into them you feel like you are walking in the footsteps of your ancestors you know mm. Little children grow up wishing they'd be allowed to do so. And that's not the feeling I got from that cliff. Did you? Mm. Well, I didn't feel much of anything. But how do you feel about it, Agnes? Very much, very much the opposite. Certainly, uh, certainly not at home. Certainly not a home I'd want to... Uh hang around in for long no it felt to me like i was being attacked by it and that's that's not the same thing even if it was left by the same people mm. that's not the same thing if if the bedtime story is true the the ones they left for the zodani would be even if they did affect your mind that way, they would be welcoming. They would encourage you to stay and study and read and understand. The ones on that cliff, they made me want to run. It felt more like a, a warning, a get out of here, a danger sign, something like that. Yes. But I must confess, if they can, if they can make a carving that gives you a a warning like that to stay away and enforces it with with effects that impact your mind like that then maybe the same people could carve things on a wall that would make you feel at home and make you want to stay and learn give you give you a sense of enormous well-being it's possible i've never felt it of course because I've never stood in their presence, at least not for long. And the ones we found 
on the other island i mean we were quite busy then panicking about being attacked by sea bats and i didn't really have much time to sit down and study them it would it would be weird if it was the same though wouldn't it the correct me if i'm i'm wrong it was what it was some time ago the, the buckyball cruise was quite uh, <laughs> quite relaxing but um the island we visited wasn't restricted no no and this one is yes so either the other one isn't known or they are different this is if a... the first one met Fess's requirements, whatever they are, I suspect he would already have left Geeker with his knowledge intact and able to continue his plan. Mm. I think he might need this one because it's different. But I don't maybe know why. It's, maybe it's the fact that it is restricted. That... Mm -hmm. The Navy are hiding something. But obviously, well... they th obviously they think it's Either it's actually something of power or importance or, you know, they're aware that people think it's of power and importance. And they don't. You know. Indeed. But if, if Fess wishes to use it as a, um, as a fairy tale, surely the, the one that's being restricted by the Imperial Navy and withheld from the Zudani people would be more of a fairy tale than one that is freely accessible i take your you, point if he was trying to a... sell it as something of power and he was <clears> able to say the imperial navy has embargoed anyone going anywhere near it that might help sell his story yes indeed chicken egg who knows who knows and it does certainly doesn't certainly doesn't help uh Rose, but it does it is interesting. If if Fess believes the bedtime story or believes he can sell it to someone else, it's a possibility. But you have to believe me when I tell you I would never have kept anything secret if I genuinely thought it would help Rose or help us get onto the island. No, no, no. Of course, we know that, right? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I've. Uh... So is hurting about Rose. I can see it. I've been there, you know, been there with her. There's no way. There's no way so would hold anything back when it comes to getting Rose back, when it comes to getting Kara back. You know. We've got a lot of crewmates that you know what we've got to look after. We just, you know, we just need all the best info we can get and I think we've got it, you know. All we've got to do now is wait for that time to come get over to that island and uh, what will be will be, I guess. See what's there. Yeah. Um, that's what we have to do. Um, and I suppose there's just one other thing I have to do to get ready. And she turns and fixes cags with her stare again. And she says... You're a pretty decent pilot, and that was a very good landing, which I appreciated in my wounded state. <coughs> so I'm only going to hurt you a very little bit, okay? <laughs> and he sort of nods slowly, and she gives him a fairly solid punch on the arm. <laughs> she says, but you deserve that. <laughs> and he sort of nods again silently and then gives her a grin and she reaches up and pats his cheek <laughs> and says, okay so rose we've got to assume that fess has her that he's keeping us safe you know that was his bargaining chip and he's either stashed her somewhere or he's got her i don't think we're going to find her if she's stashed so we've got to assume she's with him, and I think we assume he's heading off to the island. We've got to go anyway. Um, Sarah sort of looks at her device for the time. So we've still got a few hours, but it's getting closer, I suppose. We've got to be ready to go. I think we all go down on the... Um, Kags takes us down. 
grab our crew, expect the worst, and uh, you uh, beat Fess over the head repeatedly with a very heavy rock. She smiles at Zoe. Um, Zoe smiles back and says, don't think I'd start with his head. <laughs> well, well <laughs> the fun being that. <laughs> um, and as you're as you're sort of having this conversation, um, it's starting to get a little bit um, duller outside the dirigible, but down on the surface, it's the first of the two nights that the race will pass through. Um, because even though the race, if you're standing watching it from um, Selville, uh, it will be just over 24 hours. For those on board the racecraft, they actually get two short nights um, before getting back to Selville. Um, because essentially they will unwind a day, if that makes sense, <laughs> by going around the planet. <laughs> Bless you, they travel back in time. Oh, <laughs> or is it they wind, an, they wind an extra day, sorry. Oh, they jump um, ahead. Yeah, so they, they will... I mean, they won't because they'll cross the geeker equivalent of the dateline, and their clocks will be reset. But yeah, but if it wasn't for that, then yes, they would. <laughs> they would, in fact, arrive in the future. <laughs> um. So oh, down on God. the surface, um, Cat has taken over the the reins for the first of the night legs, um, and. Okay. All right. Um, as you see the um, the racers disappear into the dark, and obviously immediately the screens and cameras on on the dirigible show the the race in you know all glorious detail, um, filling in any difficult to see things with with computer graphics and the rest, so you don't miss anything. Um, there are a number of people who are on their way to the exits now. It's night time as far as they're concerned, and they're going to take a rest away from the dirigible before coming back for for tomorrow. But um, a few of them, as they're on their way out, start to catch glimpses of some movement as the night takes over. Um... They watch for a few minutes, maybe 15 minutes, before they depart to their shuttles. Um, Xander has begun to make a move. Oh. It's pulled in front of um, DSS into the lead. It's still basically following ISB's route from last year. Um, and now leads the race following that route. It is a risky route, but so far... They haven't made any major mistakes. Perhaps more notably, ISB has closed up right on VCI's tail and is following pretty much exactly the same path. Um, even in the gloom, they are probably visibly close together. I mean, it may even be the case that the, the racecraft is being hit by mist from the rooster tail behind um, IS, behind VCI's craft. Um, and behind them, there is a bit of a gap developing between fourth and fifth place, breaking the race into two halves. Um, it's not a huge gap yet, but it's starting to look like the winners are likely to come from Xander, DSS, VCI, or ISB, where, where your crewmates are. Oh, this is very exciting. Look, Agnar, look. Wow, you can see everything from up here. Have you have you seen what this button does? Look, you can flick to night vision. You see this? Look at this one. You can zoom in. Look. Look at this. It does look. Look, if you flip through, it shows every single like crewmate. Like one of those things where they sort of stand and fold their arms and you can see, you know, and they yeah, look, look really cool. Have you, seen, have you seen this one? Just look and you'll ping up Kara's. Oh, it's Kara. Look at her. She looks cool, right? She looks so cool. In fact, you should you should take a photo of that. Uh, no, take a video of it, and we'll show it to her because otherwise she's never going to see it again, right? Uh, that's pretty cool. 
quick, I'll do it. Let's while well, you flick through it's all like of our all, all of our crew. Oh, that's um, so good. Listen, while we're talking about our crew, have you got a picture of? Uh, have you got a picture of of Cat there? Not Cat. You got a picture of Rose there. We should uh, we should at least show Cags who we're who we're trying to rescue. Oh yeah, hang on. Let me um flick through what I've got. Hang on. Uh, get sorry, the video first. Get the video first. We've got time. She yeah she records everyone sort of on the on the crew, and then um, sort of gets that nice all the nice poses, and then she goes back through the device, and then she goes to um, um, one of Kara's videos because mm -hmm. Kara's no doubt vlogged with Rose before. In fact, I, I remember doing it, mm -hmm. like, uh, and she finds a bit where it focuses mostly on Rose next to Kara and shows it to Cags. This is a uh, so this is Kara. She, we know where she is. This is Rose, and this is who we're. This is who we're after. Um, okay, hang on a sec. These two people are very important. Nothing bad happens to them. Bad stuff to pretty much everyone else. I'm trying to work out what skill to roll this against. Hang on a sec. Um... <laughs> okay. All right. Um... Okay. Um, he, he looks at um, the picture of Kara and nods. All right. Um, we'll, uh, when we get to the island, we keep an eye out for her, right? And then when you flick over to Rose's picture, he lets out a sort of like soft whistle through his lips and says, Wow. Okay, I'm not going to forget her. <laughs> oh, you're just like all the other men, Kegs. Um, I'd like to think I'm unusually sleazy, actually. Well, you're, you're coming across very well in that regard right now. Excellent. Um, he glances across at Zoe to see if she's going to hit him again, but actually she seems <laughs> to be <laughs> sort of grinning a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Your uh, your ship, Kegs, is it armed? Um, in the strictest literal sense. Yes, that one. No. Okay. Um, I mean, <coughs> it wouldn't be the first time I've fought a battle with an unarmed ship and won. You understand? Um. But it would need, you know, brain trick here to lean out the side with a rifle or something like that while we're flying in. Or, I mean, I hate to do it to my lovely new ship, but um, awful lot of kinetic energy in one of those. Don't go off to block the ship, I, 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 no, we need to get into space on this thing, yeah. Uh... You and your military suicide campaigns again. You keep telling your men to do that. Look, it was only twice, all right? Uh, it, it turns back to gags. Now, um, best, best avoid that one. Uh, it will be useful for getting back to uh, to the Baltic Star. Certainly, if I'm you actually want quite lift, glad about be that because we were going to have to draw lots for who was flying it when it hit. <laughs> Mm, were we? Well, I I can't fly anything whatsoever, no, so it couldn't have been well, me. I suppose, I suppose that that makes you the ideal candidate. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, to be anyway, fair, anyway. to be fair, I've I've crashed three or four ships in my time already. Yeah. So. You see, any idiot can crash one. <laughs> uh. No, that's uh, that's good to know, though. You know, at least uh, at least we know there's no there's no escort. There's, I mean, no, 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 no. We need the ship. We could lob grenades out of the door, I guess, or oh, grenades. You say? Now well, we're talking. That's what I was going to go with, but okay, yeah. Okay, now we're in my wheelhouse. 
I mean, as a weapon, it's a bit primitive, you understand. Oh, not some of the ones I've got, my friend. Well, just don't, just don't EMP. So I, uh, that's I a... believe, I believe that Cags's ship probably needs some form of electronics in order to get us into space. Kara took all my EMPs. I'm just left with the boomy stuff. Okay, good. And, and the smoke. I do like a bit of smoke. That can cover our trail. You know how much I love throwing mm. smoke around. Dramatic. Dramatic. Oh, I love it. He's not wrong, though. It needs, like, some digital stuff to keep everything going and some analog yep. stuff in the form of the squishy one holding the stick. Mm. Don't worry, we'll keep the squishy one going. Uh, keep him safe. If he, if you keep eating those cheesy balls, mate, you'll be extra squishy by the time we uh, by the time we fly. Enjoying them, enjoying them, are you? They new to you? Um, it's not my very first time, but I haven't had them very often. the The reality is, I don't often pass up free food. Uh, you certainly haven't today. I'm glad. It They're... doesn't happen along all that often, you know. And they are the very best. Only Ag Agnar always only selects the very best. Stick around him for long. When we're back on the Baltic Star, it'll, it'll take you through all the good whiskies. You know he's coming back with us, don't you, Agnar? Yes, yeah, yeah. The uh, the bar, the bar on the Baltic Star has a fine selection of whiskies. You and I, we're going to sit sit in the bar and we're going to drink the bar's whiskies and I'm going to talk you through each one. We, we'll spend many a night doing that. That sounds actually really good. Yes. And he nudges Soraya. Oh, oh, is that the time? Oh, I better go get some sleep and maybe leave you gentlemen to a conversation. Um, Zoe sort of raises an eyebrow at Soraya to see if there's a hint. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Zoe. Let's go find. Uh, let's go find one of these rooms that Agnar's no doubt uh, prepared for us. The saved, the saved uh, damsels in distress. Sharp, um, Sharp, are you coming? She hops up and joins you, and, and Sharp stands up as well and comes along. and And she immediately says, "I don't think there's anywhere to sleep up here, um, unless you just want to keep in one of the booths." That sounds good. Let's take Agnar, over a booth. Agnar's already lying down in the booth that they've left. <laughs> Let's go find a ladies' booth. The ladies' booth. Um, we'll the the one other. literally we'll directly the opposite. Is... We'll braid each other's hair and we'll tell girly stories. Car Sharp, you'll love it. Um, <laughs> you can imagine how that goes down with both Sharp and Zoe. <laughs> so, the very <laughs> tongue-in-cheek from Soraya. <laughs> Who probably has who's only ever braided her hair before battle, probably. Um, they, <laughs> they, they they literally join you as you walk just across the middle of the um, gondola underneath the dirigible, where the reserved booth for another group of passengers has been deserted, and there's no one on the other side. So you'd be <coughs> very easily within glance across distance of the of the men if you needed them, but literally in your own little corner uh, a little bit loud so that the men can still hear so i put on her like her girliest voice and she's like so then sharp tell me all the gossip about agnar then you two are getting on well and then purposely turns her back and sharps back away from agnar as he's having a um as um as people settle in against the very comfortable seats and stretch out on the on, on the benches in these booths um, to recover. You, you can see that um, Agnar and and Cags are quietly chatting um, in barely more than a whisper, just just winding down the night with nothing conversation. Um, and as Soraya sort of leans back and closes her eyes, relaxing into into a comfortable doze. The last thing she sees is that without any remote animosity or any um, seeming 
even exchange of words. Um, Zoe and Sharp sitting each side of the sort of table that forms the middle of this little bay um, have both planted an elbow on the table and gripped each other's hands and are in the process of beginning a fairly gentle and civilized looking arm wrestle. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Soraya allows herself a little smile. Ah, uh, family. Um, it certainly is one of the <coughs> it, it is, um, as Soraya closes her eyes, um, it turns out that Sharp Ooh. just manages to push Zoe's arm down and, um, and the two of them seem to nod and, and sit back. And of course, you're reminded of the fact that both of them were in opposing military forces oh, um, not that long ago. And so the opportunity to test yourself against, against the might of, of a potential or at least former enemy shouldn't be passed up. Um, and... Uh, and they, they sit back, and then a moment later, Zoe seems to nod, and uh, uh, she and Sharp grip again. And this time, Sharp seems to be straining as hard as she can, and Zoe's just looking at her without any feeling of... Um, it doesn't look like there's any strain on her whatsoever. And as... Um, Sharp actually lets out just the tiniest little gasp of effort to reveal the fact she really is trying as hard as she can. Zoe carefully takes her hand away and Sharp is now pushing against nothing. There's, there's no arm there to push against and she still can't push it forward. <laughs> and then suddenly it seems to like release and, and she almost hits her hand on the, on the table before and she looks up at Zoe and nods and the two of them settle down for a rest. <laughs> it's like Darnie Juju. And that's Ooh. where we'll take our break. Oh, a rare, a rare injection of the Sedani G. G yeah. Market. Well, okay. since the conversation turned that way. Mm, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay. And it would definitely have piqued Sharp's interest. Mm. Piqued mine. Wonderful stuff. Lovely. Well, everyone that's watching, please hang around. We're just going to go for uh, five minutes, grab a drink, bit of fresh air, go to the loo or whatever. We'll be back for the yeah. toast and then about a 45 minute second half or so. So we're not going long tonight, so it's all punchy. So uh, we'll be back in a few. Don't go anywhere, please. And we'll see you all in a sec. See you soon. Let me just get some music going. Hang on. Oh, no, it's in the wrong place. I thought I'd done quite well. <laughs> this is the professional bit. There we go. I think <laughs> the music's up now. Music's up, I think. Is it? No. Nope. Hang on a sec. No, that's not what we want. What's this? What's this then? Where's the intro gone? Oh, there it is. Okay, that's good. Okay, we're off now. Bye. Bye.
Hey Monkeys, thanks for joining us. Hey Oliver, Good to, I've seen you much in the uh, play in the stream before. I enjoyed the bit I saw. It was nice. Thanks, man. It was good stuff tonight. Thanks, Poops. How you doing? Thanks, Pirate. Feel Nerva, Jake. What a good posse. How was it going? It was honestly anyone listening that wasn't uh, part of the Monkey Tales who are amazing. You should follow them. If I recommend anyone to anyone, it's Monkey Tales, and you should check them out. Um, they were doing some really cool stuff. There's a big giant snake, and one of them got eaten. Um, and I had to leave before. I have no idea what happened. Maybe he got swallowed and pooped out. Maybe he's still in the stomach. Maybe he cut his way out or was blown out of the mouth. Who knows? Watch the board, people. This is the exciting sort of stuff that the monkey tails get involved in. It was good. Sorry, I was, I was just sniffing some Orbisol because I've still got my, uh, my COVID leftover. Mmm, Orbisol. Lovely. It was good, though, and I heartily recommend. They normally do stuff on Friday, Saturday. They go early on us because they're UK and they do things at a sensible time. But we always say, do the uh, Monkey Tails and uh, Baltic Star Doubleheader. Go Monkey Tails. Join them when they jump over on their raid. When they do, which is always an absolute treat for us. And uh, when you come and join us for the second half of your evening, it's sweet. It's a big win as far as I'm concerned. But I hope you all had a fantastic time. Is that, uh, was it a one shot? Is that, oh, sorry, was it sort of finishing there? Is there going to be more continuation? How's that looking? Because the setting was good. I liked the characters as well. And I liked uh, Poops trying to fob everyone off when I was there and trying to pass on to the next person, which is totally something I would do as well. So I totally respected that. That was wonderful. Good jamming as well. It's just really, really nice. And someone was called Randy Savage, which is a wrestling fan. Always brings absolute joy to my heart. So yeah. It was wonderful, 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 wonderful. Uh, back soon. I'm sat here just waiting. Um, monkeys, we're not here for the, we, we have about another 45 this evening, so it's not a huge push through for anyone that's joining for the first time or whatever on a raid. Uh, we're finishing at 1 UK time. Uh, Ewan's got work in the morning. I'm still, still got my sexy COVID voice on, like a sexy duck. Um, see, there's Ewan. There he is now. Look, I'll put his audio on. Oh, he's eating. Oh, no. Hello. No, I'm not. Oh, that's right. I'm just... done. Oh, that's I'm all, all right. finished. Phew. 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 Calling me out like that. Oh, no. <laughs> it's bad. I, I broke, the, broke the rule of broadcast. No, no, no. It's all we, we tear up the rules of broadcast. We, 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 we do. Poo, we poo-poo the rules of broadcast. Probably cause we <laughs> I'm glad you went there before I did. <laughs> ah. Magic going on. Just going back to front. Oh, I've got my notes back to front. That's their problem. Oh, Donovan. Okay, that wasn't too long ago. Okay, that's good. That can go. Nah. Did we find out what happened with the snake? Did they get pooped out? That's what I'm trying to find out. No one's, resp no one's responded. They've oh. all gone there. They've all radio quiet on me. And I'm definitely on there. The, the sound is up. They're being coy. Classic monkey tails coyness. Indeed. Indeed. The very coy <laughs> girls and boys. Oh, we have Ben's IMT excited. in the house. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ben's thoroughly excited about this. This is wonderful. Mm. Nice to see him. Well, they, they were playing Cthulhu, um, Cult Cthulhu tonight. Yes, it was good. I, I managed to pop in for a bit. It was very enjoyable. Yeah. Just I, as there was a big snake. I, I think I'm now, after tonight, I think I'm now three VODs behind on this adventure of theirs, but I really uh, enjoyed the first one. Nice. Oh, they're going well. They're going along well. It's a, it's a good vibe. It's a good look to it. It's a good, uh, good, good times indeed. Um, right, are we good to go? We're limited for time. Absolutely. We're second half. All right, let's come out of that. Yeah. Right, we're here. Hello, everyone. Look, here we are. What a shock. Um, let me put something up. There's something very important we need to do. There he is. And it's what we do when we come back from the uh, break. So it's a good time, Monkey Tales. You join us for uh, tonight's toast to a fallen barman. Um, someone who we love muchly that none of you ever got to meet uh, properly in person only through flashback uh, a man whose forearms were sturdy as the oak they were carved from whose jaw was uh, was sheer granite marble i'd say like a greek god who pour, who never poured short london pints he always let the pint settle and then he'd top it up to do the little dribble in to make sure it was a full pint 
when he poured his sort of singles, when he sort of used the little lids, he'd pour the single, but then just do a little bit more liquid over the top afterwards. You know, he was, unless he knew you were driving, and then he was very strict with his measures because he's responsible. Um, but there was a song that he used to um, sing to uh, newcomers to the bar when when the Baltic Star was acting like basically like a channel ferry for a little while. And Greyhill was busy with all manners of uh, ill waifs and strays and ill-gotten characters from left, right and centre. He would uh, welcome in new drinkers to the bar with this little song. And it'd go something like this. I said, hey, boy, sitting nice and near. Greyhill always wants you to come for beer. Don't be shy. Straighten up your tie. Sit up on your bar stool. Sit <laughs> nice and high. I want to know just what to pour. Do you want a shot? Have you room for two? I've got a glass and some liquor to pour. I'll fill your glass and then we'll pour some more. He always had a way with words. Mm. The late, great Greyhill Bast. Greyhill Bast. Greyhill Bast. Right. So, as we... Um, we see the first rays of dawn come over the horizon for the dirigible. It's a few moments later um, that the same happens for the the racing craft down on the ocean surface. Um, Xander, racing east, actually sees the sun first, but it's not very long behind when the ISB craft sees the sun come up. And at that moment, we need somebody to... Um, spell cap at the controls and it's the turn of someone from the Baltic Stars crew so <coughs> Kara are you taking it yourself or are you nominating another crew member oh the pressure well I know who not to nominate Freya's terrible um oh what Sammy it's just Frey and Sammy, isn't it? Yep. Frey, Sammy, Cat, and me. Oh, yeah, Cat's well, just done her spell, so she needs to um, to now take a rest. I'll step up. I'm feeling refreshed. I'm full of joy and happiness. Um, I, I I ate a few little uh, space Haribo. I'm good to go. Come on, put me in, coach. Put me in. I can okay. do it. I can do it. Come on. Um, okay. So, you settle in, take your controls, um, get the feel for everything, cat glances across, make sure you've got it, and then she gently lets go, still keeping her fingers right Whoa. next to the controls in case, in case she needs to grab them back. Um, but you now have control of the craft. So, I need you... Uh. To make a check, please. Not her skills. Yep. Uh, this will be um, a. It'll be a dex check. Oh, not, not intellect. And with um, your choice of any viable control skill, so. Any pilot skill, any sailing skill, anything like that. I'm trying to remember what I've used before with it, you know. Um, what did I use before? I'm sure I've rolled, a, I've rolled a flat zero before, and I'm trying to work out what on earth I suggested. Um, <laughs> not right, Gambling, gambling. Take my chance in my own hands. Here. It's gambling with everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> that would really cheer up the skipper. I, I, well, I don't morning, know. everyone. That would just make her so happy. Philosophy. Um, <laughs> now, the only things I've got, the, the closest things would be yeah, athletics decks as the skill as well as the characteristic, or mm -hmm. com computers and comms are the closest things I've got to anything like that. It's probably athletics decks then you're going to need. Okay, flat zeros then. So I'm doing it by sheer... Just sheer control of the... Seat of, of, seat the of my pants kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, here we go. 
to be going horribly wrong. Uh, it might be. We'll see. It's good, but I don't know if it's good enough for us to do anything. It's a flat eight. A flat eight. Okay. Yeah. You you take over. You you find yourself settling in for the um, for the the job of steering the craft. Um, you're you're getting some useful feedback from the from the, the sort of <coughs> controls themselves and you feel you're doing okay you, you are you are managing to to take proper control of it as it goes um it's not as smooth well, as it was when cat was doing it but at the same time it's fine <laughs> it genuinely is okay it's not a it's not a horrible um a horrible problem or a horrible failure you're doing all right and uh, and as you do so um Cassie looks across um she's been snoozing as well and looks across as her eyes open up properly and she checks everything and she glances at you and says okay i'm sending you the next set of coordinates and on the screen in front of you, you can see the path that she wants you to take. Um, it's not as aggressive, perhaps, as the one she sent to Cat overnight, but it's still a fairly tight route. This is not something to take too lightly. Mm. Um, and you steer following the, the line that you are, you are aiming for. Um, seeing the relative positions to the the craft in front and the craft behind. Um, the craft in front is mere seconds ahead on the clock. And it is, as you might have imagined, VCI. Yes. VCI is going quickly, but so are you and seems to be closing the gap slowly to DSS. Um, they are following pretty much in DSS's wake, and you are following in VCI's. Um, Cassie uh, grins and says, uh, there's a rumor going around, you see, that they had inside knowledge about where to go. So I figured, if that's true, We'll follow them. We just need to hope we can trim the craft right the way they can. And uh, and she says, uh, so keep it steady. No mistakes. Put in an hour or two and we'll spell you off again. Okay, Skip. Uh, can't talk right now, though. <laughs> Concentrating. She her eyes are bulging. and she hasn't blinked for about 90 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> Knuckles are going um, a bit white. Cat assures herself that you are, you know, doing okay. And then she um, pushes her seat back, leans it backwards and closes her eyes, just sort of flexing her fingers and stretching her arms. You're just working out any stiffness or kinks before literally lying back, looking like she doesn't have a care in the world and she's just going to sleep through the next few hours. Oh, before you go to sleep, Cat, um, have you heard... Uh, there's a tale from my youth. Have you heard about um, a gravy hot tub incident? Have I ever told you about it? <laughs> It'll take um, my mind off it. I know it doesn't feel like a good time, but it'll take my mind off it, please, while I settle down. This is very fast right now. You, you know, <coughs> you know what? Mm. Sure. Tell me a bedtime story. Oh, it'll, it'll just take a just take a minute, okay? Well, <coughs> <coughs> sorry. Oh, that's terrible. For people listening, I do apologise. Hang on, I need one more. I muted that one for you, though. Okay, sorry, that's the COVID. Look, let's have some sympathy, yeah? Okay. Right. Well, it's only going to take a minute, okay? It's, 
It's, so it started with a cult using a small convention in a historic town as a front for their fundraising efforts. And from there, they, 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 they spent all their money. They, they sort of, they heard that the people that would come in were really, um, were really into Bisto. And they, they, instead of, uh, they, so they were going to buy a, um, a pack of instant gravy for the dinner. But um, the person buying it accidentally um, on the internet clicked for um, a thousand boxes instead of one. And they were so embarrassed that they uh, sort of they decided that they didn't want to send it back, so they just made it all up. And then they decided when they were all drunk that they would have like a big hot tub party. But mm-hmm. then they had lots of gravy left over, and then they slowly replaced all the water with gravy, and everyone got third degree burns, and it cost thousands of pounds to fix all the pipes, and <laughs> and people were throwing onions in, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 squirting each other with basters it was it was terrible it was <laughs> that's honestly... a lot <laughs> but anyway thank you i think this has settled me and i'm feeling more confident now i just it, needed to get off my chest it's a perfect bedtime story thank you good night cat <laughs> so, well thought you like that one <laughs> excellent um so um the the race continues. You've now got a few hours of broad daylight before Cat will take her second go at the controls for the second night. Not long after dawn, you know, ship's time, if you know what I mean, or craft time, um, you'll be coming past Harrenhal. So, um, you've got, essentially, uh, a few hours to go for this daytime passage, but those few hours, you only have to do the first bit, and there's somebody lined up for the next part, okay? Wonderful, wonderful. Setting up nicely. Okay. It was a good result. You are not... Not going to close the gap or anything, but you've maintained the required separation and you are solidly in four. Let's get that medal. So in the ship, Kara's just focused on that for the next few hours now. Yeah, absolutely. So we turn our attention to... um, it's only been a few hours down. Do you guys want to keep sleeping for a while longer? Um, or would you like to get up and about and do anything? Because essentially you can just do a nine hour spark out. And then when you wake, it'll be dawn and everything will be approaching Heron Hall. It's just if you've got anything else you need to do first. So I've got nothing else. Agnar? Um, no, I think it's probably best that Agnar does sleep off the day the day before with oh, Sharp. Yeah, um, but he will he will get up a couple of hours early and you know go through his normal uh, the old bladder. Not the well, yes, one one the the old bladder because he's an old bladder now. So uh, and it, but he, he won't go through the normal. Uh, hair maintenance routine but he'll he'll go through somewhat of a more uh combat orientated morning routine okay and he'll just check over everything and you know take stock of his uh the ammunition he has on him and uh yeah so just an hour and a half of mousse and gel before checking the ammo <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah just the quick the quick morning routine when it yeah comes of course to, uh, yeah. yeah you've got to do something all right <laughs> then then we it's can pop briefly back to the um, the race because as everybody up in the sky is taking their is taking their time, the um, in the race it isn't very long before one of the other crew spells um, Kara, 
and takes over. So that's pretty solid. Again, not an exceptional leg. The sort of second half of the day leg is is okay, but not spectacular. Um, the people who are sort of handling the engineering requirements seem pleased with the performance of the craft, but not a particularly awesome performance from the pilot. Uh, perhaps only comparable with um, with Cara's. Oh, not so exceptional. Oh. It's solid, don't get me wrong, but nothing spectacular. Um, it looks as if Xander is still pulling out a lead, but it also looks as if um, the the quite risky ISB strategy from last year, which Xander is copying fairly slavishly. Now we're getting to the point where ISB thought they'd taken all the risks they wanted to last year, and they were starting to play it a little bit safer. And so this is the point where it's, you know, Xander are going to come under more threat if you can take those risks yourself now and they're getting slowly hauled in very slowly agonizingly slowly by the three chasing craft um at the same time vci is slowly catching dss and they are now well within dss's um rooster tail and because you're so close, you can actually see that not only are they within that, they've actually pulled underneath it to the point where they're effectively slipstreaming, which is very risky if you don't know exactly what the craft in front is going to do. Um, but maybe they do know. Hmm. The, um, the risk is great, but they are plowing on well. And at the relevant point... Cassie yells across to um, to Cat that it's time for her to take her night shift again, and Cat snuggles down into into a comfortable piloting position, rests her hands on the controls, and gets ready. And <laughs> okay, um, Control is handed over to her, and there's something about her sureness on the controls, her confidence. The moment it's handed over to her, the craft just feels smoother, faster, more agile. It's, it's like everything is going exactly right. Um, and... As she feels the the feedback from from the controls, you can see a a smile spread across her face that she's completely in her element. And this is a very very slick um, handover, and she looks very much in control. Um, at the key moment. Um, as you start to sort of head into the dark, you see uh, Cassie yell out a course to Cat, and that course would take you quite far from the islands to sort of follow Xander's slightly more conservative route now. And Cat yells back, I've got this. We're cutting everything fine. Okay, Cassie? And she's going to make a persuade check. Where's <laughs> all our plans? <laughs> um, Cassie does not seem convinced. This might be a time for you to try and chime in. Yeah. Um, uh, Cara will sort of clamber forward a little bit from her spot. She'll say, Cassie, can't you feel that? I'm done. Cat, it's the best the ship's been feeling all afternoon, right? We did all right. We're closing, but she's got it. She's the best pilot you know. She's the best pilot I know. 
and we've all looked at this data. You've looked at it. I know you've poured over it. I know that... Are you, are you racing for position now, Chief? Or are you... Um, this is where it can be won. We've got a back. We've got a backer. Cat's the best we know, right? She's the one you've trusted all the way through on the most important shifts. If anyone can do it, it's her. And if she gets through that, we're going to come out there in the lead. No one's doing this. This is the time to do it, right? This is the time to do it. Surely. Glory, right? That's what That's what the viewers will want. That's what the sponsors will want. That's what all of us in here want. We're in it to win it. Come on, Skip. I back our crew. I back Cat. I back you. Roll a persuade check, please, with um, intellect. And you can have a boon for this one. Awesome. Thank you. Ah. It was a good argument, but not only that, it's also that Cat is doing so well in controlling the craft, it's got to give her confidence. Yep. She's had a good streak. She has, hasn't she? And that's the thing. She's rolling well, right? Should be, yeah, it's all right. Uh, I got rid of a one though, so that's good. Uh, Sucks. No, nine plus four is a 13. A 13? Yes, good times. You rolled 2d6 and got a 13. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I say? Inter intellect with a persuade is a plus, plus four for me. It's the, yeah, uh, it's, it's fantastic. My, it's my wheelhouse. 2d6 and 13 came out of it. That's absolutely fair. This is a good moment to do that. You know how sometimes a roll matters more than another roll? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm quite glad Soraya rolled her four earlier today. Though. There, there was one earlier in the evening where it was fundamentally about eyebrow synchronization, but this one... <laughs> it's a very important role. I think all roles are of equal importance. <laughs> eyebrow so, synchronization, key. Um... There's there's a sort of long pause as Cassie stares at you, and then she nods and glances across at Cat and says, "We're going to be in the lead at dawn, Cat." And Cat says, "We might even be finished." And <laughs> she she grins and says, "All right." Keep your eyes up for some changes. And you see over the next couple of minutes a new course, which includes some very tight little sinuous changes around rocks and shoals and risky and dangerous things. Um, but she is cutting very close to everything and within a matter of a few kilometres of Herrenhal, which is already visible on the path she's plotted. Um, it is... At the speed you're going, effectively a thousand kilometers per hour, it is fast to go as close as you are going to some of these rocks. And with a with a bit of glee in her voice, Cat yells out, That's more like it. We can go closer to some of these. And <laughs> and Cassie nods and turns back and tightens it even more. This is a tough course for the night. Um, so you've got, if this works, there is every chance you could actually be leading at dawn. Um, and Cat looks completely in charge. Um, what time locally are we getting past Heron Hill? You will hit Harrenhal just after dawn. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, which will be on Selville, which is like an hour and a half ahead kind of thing. Mm -hmm. or two hours ahead. That will be in in the middle of the morning. Because uh, remember, this is essentially equatorial. Um, so you will hit it, say, two hours after dawn. It'll be mid-morning for um, for people at Selville with the finish line at Selville, which is about five, 
thousand kilometers after you pass the dawn threshold on the surface. Okay. Yes, thank you. Um, so that's about where you are now, and looking at the line you've picked, this is very risky. But Cat looks completely in charge, and the ship races through these relatively dangerous things without any kind of suggestion that anything's wrong. You do notice that some of the other crew are finding it a little bit difficult to close their eyes and rest as they watch <laughs> rocks flash past at almost the speed of sound at quite frighteningly close distances. Um, but you are no longer in direct line with any of the other craft. Xander has moved to a more safe course, and the pairing of DSS and VCI, which are effectively working in tandem at the moment, um, are taking it slightly more dangerously, but nowhere near as risky as you guys are. <laughs> this is good. Um Kara's job for now then is just to cling on until dawn and try and try and sleep and message and blog and all her usual bits and pieces. Okay. Um, then what we will do then is run through this night because in terms of hours, you understand, I mean, it's going to sound a bit weird exactly to put it in this way but in terms of hours only fewer than 12 hours will have passed on the airship between um in including cara's two shifts if i'm oh, sorry cat's two shifts if you know what i mean it's because you're traveling east at the speed you are you're doing days twice as quickly mm. as the as the people on the on the dirigible mm who are keeping their clock. I mean, they're doing the same days, but they're keeping their clock at Selville. So um, you're dealing with local conditions on the deck. Um, it is a slightly bizarre thing that you're doing one circumnavigation of the planet, which means you get two overnight trips, but that's just how planets work. And in the morning, as you as you see everything sort of start to brighten again, very comparably timed, the <coughs> the same thing is happening on the airship on the dirigible, but that's happening um, a little bit earlier because you're much higher above the surface, of course. So you get to see the dawn much sooner um and i take it Kara's going to try and get some sleep yeah best she can it's really let's get okay. everyone as fresh as possible all right then uh when you uh find yourself waking in the morning this is the last sort of four hours before noon. So there's probably about six or seven hours to the end of the race as mm. dawn breaks. Um, essentially, it will be you know, mid-afternoon um, at Selville when the race is finished. So you've got a few hours left of actual race. Um Dawn comes, you're maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half away from Heron Hall. It's that kind of distance. And Cat is looking fit and fast and strong. And she's managed to control the craft really, really well. But when one of the other crew takes over and she can let go of the controls and relax, she does look like she's been through a bit of a a bit of a push for three and a half hours, however long her, 
her leg literally was. That was that was tense. And she's sort of stretching her shoulders and relaxing. But she glances across at you with a grin. And oh, the handover's pretty good. Oh yeah. So you will be delighted to know that as the um as you start to sort of come back to consciousness, Kat is just trying to get the kinks out of her shoulders and her fingers as she relaxes again, having having put in a, a serious stint. Um, you quickly check the stats and you find that you are leading. ISB is leading now VCI um, in that little nighttime gap, um, I, um, DSS has parted ways with VCI and has fallen quite well back. Um, not, not impossibly far back yet, but they're, they're no longer on the, uh, on the sort of cutting edge of things, but as it stands, VCI is behind you and a fair way behind you now. That was a successful, successful leg with um, with Xander not very far behind them. Xander <coughs> third. Yeah. Okay. And then um, nice. DSS in fourth, but they're a bit of a way back now. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And oh. as you um, as you start to sort of pay attention to what's coming, you now have a little bit of time for any communications you want to do, any preparation you want to do. You have less than two hours before you reach Harrenhal. Um First things first, I'm going to go find um, Cassie. What's Cassie up to? Um, she is intermittently napping, but right now she's awake, checking the screen, making sure everything's still going well. The person who spelled cat is actually doing pretty well. Um, so she's not currently thinking of changing the path because it's slightly easier to do it in daylight anyway. And, and therefore she's thinking we can do this. We can do this and we can win this even against the cheating VCI people. Oh, so, so sweet. Um, how's it looking, Skip? So far, I'm finding it hard to imagine I could have been happier. She's putting a hell of a shift, isn't she? It was magnificent. Is there any other way that we can make this ship go faster, eke out a few uh, a few extra kilometers an hour over the last few hours, maybe? You know, if everything's on the table, you know? I mean, we could theoretically make the course even tighter, but I'm loath to do that because obviously that adds risk and we're leading right now. It, it's the job of other people to take ridiculous risks. I think we've probably got the right balance of let's be quick, but let's not be idiots, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, we don't want a more dangerous route. I can't think of anything else. We're, we're burning through fuel reasonably quickly, so we're getting lighter all the time. We are... Yeah. We're going to be... I think we're going to be okay. I think we've got a good chance from here. You said uh, lighter. Does uh, the weight on the ship make that much of a difference at this stage of the game? It's getting to the point where if you've got any crew who are surplus to requirements, they might be thinking about dropping off. Um, it's usually done a bit closer to the finish where you need the final boost in case you're running into you know 
just nick a place from someone who's just a few seconds ahead of you. But the earlier you do it, the better the value. The problem is whoever you drop off has got to wait to be picked up. And it's it's no fun dropping out of a craft at a thousand clicks an hour. Uh, you know, I'm a girl that likes to experience new things. And um, I could talk to my um, my colleagues. We're all spare parts now for the running. Kat's done her big shift. We've done ours. We're just sort of weighing it down. If you need it, if I can talk to, to it, we could get a few of us out of the shift if you wanted. If it would make the difference. We've got friends, you know, that can come and grab us. That wouldn't be too long. Wouldn't even need to go over radio or anything. We've got a mate of ours who's um, travelling around not too far off. So it's not like we're going to be in the walk for hours or anything. Roll a persuade for me, please. Your choice of intellect or social. Uh, either way. No, let's go intellect. Okay. Eleven. <laughs> seven. Nice. seven. The way you said four. that, I thought it was going to be like <laughs> seven. <coughs> well, it was a seven. Luckily, it nicely was a, done. Seven plus four. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you see, you torture me as much as I torture you. <laughs> um. She looks at you for a second and she says you're talking about four people getting off mm. that would make a big difference and well, i we... can't ask cat to do another stint she's got look she should say she could but look at her eyes man she's still processing the last one <sighs> I'm planning to do the last couple of hours myself, and yeah. Okay. That makes sense. We'll be... We'll be fine. You're sure you've got someone picking you up? I'll get on the device in a second. He's just waiting for the waiting for the call, quite frankly. It's been at the back of my mind, you know. We've, we've, we've got some friends here anyway and they've sort of been following the race but you know while I was snoozing it came to me you know what what's the last thing we could do as long as you remember us in your speech you know we might not be back in time for the celebration but <laughs> open a champagne for us you know maybe name a name a boat after me maybe a, a name your next child after me you know something like that that'll be you know what <laughs> If I go ahead and run a craft in this race next year, I will name it after Cat. You should. She's um she's been an absolute legend. All right. So you know the rules for getting off this thing at speed. Yep. Clutch clutch your bum and drop out the hole. You climb into the chute. You wrap yourself in the emergency pod and you hit the go. Before you go, you yell out to whoever's steering that you're going and you wait until they tell you the ship is straight and level and it's going to be straight and level for a while because I know this sounds like it's not going to have that big an impact, but milliseconds can count. You're going to be fired out of the back of this thing <laughs> at hundreds of of kilometers an hour and that actually gives us a little boost so pick your spot tell them when to go they'll straighten everything up make sure that we're going in a straight line and we'll get the best use out of it and then hit the button okay Cara thinks a bit thoughtful face and nods Goes, got it straight and level i've got just the space let me get in touch with my man get everything done we'll be out i reckon within an hour <coughs> she says uh, so wh where is this space you're dropping 
um, Car Cara sort of looks at sort of the, the readout. It says that there's some sort of slightly bigger rocks around there. Like, I don't think we're planning to make landfall, but it's going to be quick. And I just think things might be a little bit safer around, the, around those. Like, we, like I say, just, we could be bobbing up and down for a few minutes. That just feels, you know, we can cling onto a little bit of rock or something if need be. She nods, and I, I take it you are indicating roughly Heronhal. Yeah, in sort of Kara's vaguely yeah. vague way. She she looks at it and turns and gives you a little <laughs> nod, and she says, "Whatever the cost, right? We play to win." Absolutely, That's what we're in it for. And she nods, and over the next hour or so you can all strap yourselves into the escape pods and get ready into that escape chute um cat wanders around sort of giving a little tap on the shoulder to everyone and wishing them good luck and telling them they've got to win now because she set it up for them um and you all climb into the pods and as the moment comes um cat is staring up at the map and she's doing the sort of flight calculations in her head. And at a certain point, she just sticks her thumb up to the rest of you. And you feel the vast acceleration as you're fired down these escape chutes and fly out of the back of the craft. Um, it's the best part of 100 feet above the sea oh. as you fly out of the back. Because the craft is is a considerable way up and the escape chutes are at the top of that curve. Um, you fly out and immediately hit the curtain of the rooster tail of water that comes up off the back of the craft and punch through it like it's not even there. It's just a roaring noise as you go through it. And then there's amazing, beautiful sunshine with the most astonishing rainbow overhead of the curve of that rooster tail before you fly through the second part of the arch um, slowing down the whole time um, moving more and more slowly as air resistance slows you and after you pass the second rooster tail you see little um, little air brakes deploy on the sides of the escape pods and slow you down as you glance left and right you can actually see the other pods also slowing down because otherwise they'd have shot past you at this point and as you fall and fall towards the water that's where we'll call it for tonight Right. You need to come and get me now, then, Ewan. We agreed that, right? <laughs> no. No, I, I know nothing. Back to the Baltic Star. <laughs> to the... What, what's the next planet we're off to? <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Cara. Yeah, so long. We'll leave you to the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to go and get Cat, at least. Yeah, that's, well, that's true. true and Rose, yeah, you need the pilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that was that was wonderful. That was a lovely, uh... very visual. It was lovely all round. There were some lovely, uh, nice team team uh, moments as we got back together. And yeah, a, a lovely, lovely moment shooting out the back of a ridiculously fast craft. Yeah. Glorious. Glorious. Thank you very much, guys. That was fun this evening. Thank and you, Ben. Thank you, Ian. Thank you both. Yeah. And um, yes, uh, we're are we playing Traveller next week as well? Yes, it's only Saturdays you're not available, isn't it, Ewan? Yeah. Yeah. Think, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, it was Saturdays. just there was something at the back of my mind that said Ewan might not be around on Friday. But okay, yes, that's good. Yeah. Um, so tomorrow night we are playing Orbital Blues. Mm, the, the end of the arc, I believe. The end of the arc, unless we manage to delay it with a 14 hour shopping trip. Well, yeah. Standard, to be more, honest. More hemp bags. Oh, I always need a hemp bag to put some wire wool in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's tomorrow night, 11 o'clock UK time. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you had some fun this evening. And. Mm. Um, Thank you very much if you're watching on VOD as well. Always appreciate that. And we will hopefully catch you tomorrow for the final chapter of our current Orbital Blues arc. Um, 
And until then. May peace be with you. Goodbye. <laughs> I don't know. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. That'll do. See you guys. Don't jump out the back of any ships. Yeah, no. don't don't get fired don't, out of the back of any ships yeah, anyway. Yeah. Don't try this at home warning on our stream after Apple. Right. <laughs> See you later, crummy cracks. <laughs> Good night. Night.